Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, I am Mike the Herbivore and I'm so grateful to have you here. For many of you who are sports fans out there, you know that there's a very big game happening this weekend. And that usually means that you'd get together with friends and have a ton of food. Obviously this year is a little bit different and the celebrations are probably significantly smaller, but that doesn't mean that you still can't enjoy some of your favorites. Now a lot of those favorites don't fall into the plant-based diet, but that doesn't mean that we still can't enjoy some of the flavors that everyone else does. For me, one of the things I always really liked were buffalo wings, but obviously that doesn't fall into the plant-based category. But all is not lost. I have a tofu version of that that I think you're going to enjoy. Stick around and I'll show you not only how to make that, but a dip that goes with it that you will swear is blue cheese. So come into my kitchen and let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is press our tofu. Now what that means is that we're gonna take the tofu that we have and try to press some of the water that is out of it. That comes with the packaging. You can help speed this process along if you open your tofu, drain it, and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight, or even just a couple of hours beforehand. Or you can take it and do uh, what we're doing right now. So. You're gonna take your tofu and you're gonna wrap it in a paper towel or any lint-free towel will do just fine. Then we're gonna set that on our thing. And then what you wanna do is you wanna put something heavy on it. So I have a cast iron pan here. I'm gonna put a cast iron pan on it. And honestly, that's all that we're gonna do. Now, if you don't have a cast iron pan, you can substitute for something else, like a regular pan and a couple of books, or maybe a tea kettle that's full of water. It really doesn't matter what you guys use, as long as you're using something that has a little bit of weight to it, that will allow the tofu to press. But I'm gonna leave the cast iron skillet on it because I have one, and I might as well. And I'm not using it for this recipe, so I don't want it to feel left out. But anyway, if you guys have a uh, firm tofu, you're gonna be looking to keep this on here for about 10 minutes. If you have uh, a semi-firm or like medium firm tofu, you're probably looking closer to like 20, 25 minutes. So that's step one. I failed to mention when you looked at it initially, you saw that it was the cutting board inside of a cookie sheet. That's just because as the water starts to press out of it, it does tend to leak everywhere. You learn that one the hard way. So if I put it in a cookie sheet, then that way it has a little bit of a rim to it and it'll keep all the water contained. But since your cutting board is elevated slightly, it will actually help to drain the tofu or to drain the water away from the tofu. So that's what that's all about. So step number one, we are going to set this thing to bake. I like to use confection bake. If you have a convection bake feature, I highly recommend it. Or you can always use regular bake. If you're using the convection oven, then what I would recommend is that you put it at 400 degrees. If you're using a conventional oven, a conventional bake method, then I would do 425. That's just me. Uh, but since we're doing convection bake, let's go back to 400 degrees. We'll set that up and let's get started. So we're gonna take our plate, just a regular plate with maybe a little bit of a rim to it. And then you're gonna take a half of a cup of flour. Now, if you're gluten-free, you can use gluten-free flour. You can substitute this for really any kind of flour. You can use uh, corn flour if you want to, it doesn't really matter, but a uh, half a cup of flour. And you'll notice I didn't really level it off. We're not baking here, so it doesn't have to be a precise measurement like it typically does when you're doing uh, baking. It can just be regular. We're using this as an initial coating on our tofu. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. Then in a bowl, this regular bowl, we're gonna be mixing the rest of the dry ingredients. We're gonna take one cup of cornmeal. one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. You can always add a little more salt and pepper depending on your taste, but I recommend you be very, very vigilant about how much salt you put in it because we do have a little bit of salt in our sauce and you don't want it to taste too salty. Then we're just going to grab a whisk and mix it all together. You just want to get all the ingredients sort of blended together because what we're going to end up doing with this little mixture, 
after we get this mixed is we are going to put it on another plate. Just get it nice and flat. Now, if you have any high rimmed bowls that are a little bit wider, you can go ahead and use that. I like to use a plate just because I like the surface volume that's on it. Um, I'm going to forewarn you guys, this is not going to be a super clean process. So just be aware of that. So then we're going to set that aside. That is a second thing. Now, I like to use the same bowl just because I'm typically the one that's going to be doing the dishes when I make this much food. So uh, if you are a little bit reluctant about that, you can always get a new bowl. I'm totally fine using the same bowl. So in this bowl, we're going to combine one half of a cup of veganaise or plant-based mayo, if you will. I use veganaise, so I said veganaise, but any plant-based mayonnaise substitute would be just fine. Then we're also going to combine a quarter cup of buffalo sauce. Now, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you can see the recipe where we made the buffalo sauce over there. And we're going to give that a little mix. until it is very well combined. And this is what we're going to use as a substitute for our egg wash, since we are going plant-based and we don't have eggs. Cool. So that's it, guys. So that gives us our one, two, and three steps to making what we're gonna make. But first, we need to get back our tofu. So now that we have our tofu, we're gonna remove our pan. And get rid of this paper towel. Now you can see the water here. That's why I said that you wanna use a cookie sheet with the cutting board, because the water is just gonna drip off. My tofu kinda of had a little bit of an odd shape to it to begin with, but that's okay. All right, try this mammer jammer off and get rid of this. All right, so our cutting board is dry. I'm gonna grab our tofu and give them a little pat with paper towel just to get any of the excess, excess moisture off. And now we're gonna start cutting this guy up. So when it comes to cutting your tofu, this is what I like to do. First and foremost, I'm gonna set him on his edge like this. And I'm gonna cut him right down the middle. And I'm gonna lay them flat, two pieces, supposedly, right next to each other. And then we're gonna cut it in half. And then we're gonna cut this part into thirds. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Cut this into thirds. And then one final cut right down the middle to cut those into little pieces here. Now we're ready to start breading, but before we do, I want you to take one chunk of this and set it aside. I've got something special planned for this guy. All right, let's proceed. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I don't need the knife anymore, so we're gonna get that out of the way here. I'm gonna slide this over. And let's get our stations ready. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your cookie sheet. I'll use a different one because I threw the other one in the sink with a bunch of dirty dishes, so that's not actually gonna work for me. For me. So I've got this. Then you're gonna to wanna to take a piece of parchment paper. And we're gonna take our parchment paper. Let's see if I can be louder with that, huh? And you just want this to lie flat into your cookie sheet. Hopefully I didn't take up too much of the camera. It's kind of hard to tell from an aerial view, but there you go. Now we're going to start the breading process. So what we're going to do is we're going to take first couple pieces, just put them in the flour. Just get them nice and floury. And then I like to try to get as much of it done as possible. You could literally grab as many of these cubes as you wanted to, throw them in here. And what this is going to help do is kind of soak up the excess moisture that we have on our tofu. You guys remember from science, what happens when we add water and heat together? 
it creates steam. And if you're trying to bread something, the last thing you want is steam bursting through your breading because guess what that's going to do? It's going to cause that bad boy to not stick. Not that we're not going to have that problem anyway, but you know, we're going to try our best. Let's speed this up. And there we go. Cool. And that's all we got for that. Now, you can use less flour if you want to when you're making your base here. I personally would rather have it and then not need it than need it and not have it. The worst thing for me is when you're in the middle of the process of doing it, you have all this uh, uh, flour that you need and then poof, nothing. So anyway, that's why I use a, a full half of a cup. You're more than welcome to use a third of a cup if you prefer. That's up to you. All right, so after we get these breaded, our next step is going to be to egg wash them and do them. Now you'll notice that my fingers are kind of floury. What I recommend is that you clean your hands in between each of these steps. Why? Not so much because your hands are dirty and they do whatever, it's because the dough is gonna to continue to pile up on your fingers. So it's gonna get harder and harder to keep a grip on your stuff and you're gonna start taking away the batter off of your items, which you don't wanna happen. So I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. All right, hands are flour free, a little wet, but that's okay. Now we're gonna take all these little chunks that we had lovely floured breaded and we're gonna throw them in our mayo. You can only really do about four at a time in this bowl. If you have a larger bowl, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. So get them a nice little coating on that. And then we're just gonna plop them on our flour. So same thing as before, I like to complete all one step before moving on to the next one, but that's just me. Get some missing pieces here. If you wanna make this a group project or you wanna do this with kids, then I would say have them be in charge of one of these steps. That way you don't have to keep going back and forth between everything and it'll make things go a little faster. Speaking of faster, let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So. All right, guys, I kind of ran out of space on my plate. So like I said, I recommend washing your hands in between. I know I still have a few more left, but I need the space. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys out of the way. So give me one minute. Let me wash my hands and we'll start over from there. And no surprise here. All we're going to do with this is just get these guys making sure that we have a coating on all of them. I probably put too many on the plate just to begin with because I was trying to get as much done as possible. That's why you don't rush. When you're cooking, see, that's not great. That's okay. There we go. There we go. That's what we're kind of going for. Well, not my fingers, but <laughs> the nuggets. Get those covered. Perfect. All right. That one's better. So maybe when you're doing this on your own, you don't put so many on the plate at one given point in time so that you can actually maneuver like you need to. But you know what? Lesson learned, this is what happens when you're not a professional chef. Oh well. All right, just like before, let's speed this up a little. I'm gonna pause this for a second to show you guys. See, I'm missing a little bit of tofu, so I'm gonna take, or a little bit of sauce. So I'm gonna take my uh, mayo and kind of dab it on that because you want these guys to have sauce all around them. See, that fix that. All right, back to fast forward.
All right, since you guys kind of see how the process is going, see what I mean by the batter buildup that we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the last few that I have, get them all on the cookie sheet, and then we're gonna get them in the oven. All right, cool. All right, so I cleaned up after myself a little bit, and this is what our finished product looks like. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take this tray now and put it in the oven and bake it uh, for 20 minutes. We're gonna stick those bad boys right in the oven now what we want to set it for we're going to be cooking for 20 minutes i like to set it for 12 and then flip them then rather than the actual halfway point all right now we wait remember as we wait i told you that we were going to set aside this tofu to be used for something later now's the time so we're going to take these pieces of tofu and all i want you to do is crumble them up just use your fingers and crumble them up into small little chunks. Super easy. Now we're going to take that and to that we are going to add a full cup of the vegan mayo or vegan aids if you will. And then to that, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of white vinegar, a quarter teaspoon of dried parsley, and a half of a teaspoon of dried dill. Now you can certainly use fresh ingredients if you want to, and rather than the dried herbs, you can definitely use fresh. However, I think it's kind of, uh, a little bit wasteful because you can't really buy that small of a quantity that you need so the dried works totally fine then all you're gonna do is mix this together and it doesn't make the most beautiful sound but it'll work and that's it kids that's all that we got there. That is our vegan blue cheese dressing. Well, dipping sauce. If you want this to be a dressing for salads, I recommend adding maybe a tablespoon or two of plant-based milk. That's what I would recommend. This is a little bit chunkier, but and that's it. Now we're just gonna keep waiting for our buffalo things. All right, that sound means that we are done. Hello, my babies. Okay, so what we want to do right now is kind of let these sit just a little bit. I'd say give them about five, six minutes or so, and then we're going to sauce these puppies up. Now that we've got these guys cooled down a little bit to the touch, we're just going to take our fingers, drop them in our buffalo sauce, Put them back on the pan. We're gonna do that for all of them. Now you might be asking why wouldn't I just toss these in something? It's because the breading can be a little bit delicate. And you don't want the breading to all fall off of it until they get completely sauced. And we will time lapse this one as well. <laughs> As you guys can see, I ran out of sauce, but uh, I'll go grab more.
And there you have it, everyone. Buffalo things. The camera died before I had a chance to finish, but I just want to let you know if you put these back in the oven for about five minutes, the sauce will reabsorb into the breading and you'll get them to look like this. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe because I promise more content is on the way. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, or you can always hit me up on my Instagram, at MikeTheHerbivore. I appreciate your time, and remember, be good to yourself, be good to others, be kind to the animals, and go eat the plants. Thanks for watching.